Hello there, my fellow communists of the 31st century, and welcome back to another lore video from the Battletech universe. Today we are gonna be talking about the fifth, and for the time being, the final major successor state of the Inner Sphere, in the form of the Capellan Confederation of House Liao. However, unlike the previous overview videos I made, in this episode we will only discuss a brief summary of their history, their military, and a look at their government. That's because, unlike the lore of the other successor states, the Capellan aspects of society and culture are significantly more detailed, and I basically couldn't fit all of that in just this video. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? The Capellan Confederation is the smallest and the youngest of the successor states. A socialistic police state with strong Chinese and Russian influences, the Confederation is ruled by the authoritarian Chancellor, who has almost always been a member of House Liao. After the end of the Hegemony Supremacy War, the Capellan Commonality was formed in 2310, as a loose federation of all the major powers occupying the Capellan Zone. In the midst of a House Davion Airtag's peacekeeping operation, the heads of the major Capellan powers met on the world of St. Andre in July of 2367. There, Duke Franco Liao of the Duchy of Liao made a radical proposition. Dissolve the commonality and unify the entire Capellan zone under a centralized authority, strong enough to resist foreign intervention. After much debate, the motion was adopted, and the Capellan Confederation was born. The Capellan Confederation enjoyed great prosperity with the peace brought about by the Star League, but unfortunately this was not to last. At the outbreak of the Star League Civil War, Chancellor Barbara Liao adopted a position of armed neutrality, allowing neither Alexander Kerensky nor Stefan Amaris to enter Capellan territory. With the dissolution of the Council and the self-imposed exile of Kerensky and the Star League Defense Forces, the succession wars became inevitable. The first of them began in December 2786, and the Confederation made large gains by occupying worlds of the former Terran hegemony, most of which fell peacefully, and launching attacks against the Free Worlds League and Federated Sons. The first succession war finally came to an end in 2821, with a ceasefire between the Liao and Davion realms. The start of the Second Succession War in 2828 was inauspicious, as Ilsa Liao became the first Chancellor killed in combat, personally commanding the rear guard after the failed invasion of Orbisonia. A ceasefire was achieved in 2862, when Danemar Liao agreed to humiliating concessions to the Federated Sons, but peace only lasted a few years before the Third Succession War began. Towards the end of the Third War, the Confederation turned towards subterfuge where force no longer worked. Chancellor Maximilian Liao helped to spark Anton's revolt in the Free Worlds League, and began plotting with Michael Hasek Davion to achieve the same in the Federated Sons. However, the Fourth Succession War helped cut that conspiracy off at the knees, as the Confederation found itself the target of the newly christened Federated Commonwealth. The Capellan Confederation was almost destroyed in the Fourth War, and what worlds it didn't lose to the Fedcom Alliance broke away to form their own splinter states, in the form of the Tychonov Free Republic and the St. Ives Compact. Though severely weakened, the Confederation survived the Andurian Crisis, which helped to improve morale with its military, and it was untouched by the clan invasion, giving the realm time to rebuild itself. The highest administrative division within the Confederation is the Commonality. 
In the beginning, each commonality was roughly analogous to the founding states of the Confederation. The Capella commonality, the Tychonov commonality, the Sian commonality, the Sarna commonality, and the St. Ives commonality. A sixth one, the Chesterton commonality, was created shortly thereafter, but largely existed in name only, ruled in exile on Sian by the Hargreaves family. That number was cut down to two after the end of the Fourth Succession War, the Capella and the Sian commonalities, while the Chesterton commonality in exile was abolished in 3040. However, in the years after the clan invasion, the Confederation was able to reclaim some of its lost territory. And by 3067, it had reformed the Liao and St. Ives commonalities and created the Victoria commonality. These are divided further into duchies, each encompassing between two and eight star systems, ruled by a duke or duchess. Each duchy is then divided into warrens, usually a pair of star systems, and ruled by a ducal representative known as a diem. Individual worlds within a warren are known as domains and ruled by a nobleman under the authority of the local diem, though the populace may appeal any decisions through their local refractor. In every case, the noble in charge of each district has the power to rule over it as their own personal fiefdom, provided they obey all the Capellan laws, of course. Additionally, unless a duchy or fiefdom is hereditary in nature, the Chancellor has the power to reassign every district at will. The Chancellor The Chancellor is the face of the Capellan Confederation invested with immense executive and legislative authority. The Ertag's celestial wisdom is responsible for all domestic and foreign policy for the Confederation, and with the power to issue decrees, can make legislative changes at will. The Chancellor also serves as the Commander-in-Chief of the Capellan Confederation Armed Forces and has personal control over the warrior houses and the death commandos. Although originally serving a 10-year term, the position was turned into a lifetime appointment by decree in 2480, and while not mandated by law, the position is essentially reserved for members of House Liao. The Prefectorate Sometimes also known as the Prefecture, the Prefectorate is the oldest and highest governing body in the Capellan State. Begun by Franco Liao as an advisory council, its members are elected from the House of Scions for 10-year terms. Originally numbering six individuals, each a representative from one of the six original commonalities, it was enlarged to 12 by Kurnaf Liao to include other powerful men and women. Kurnaf Liao also gave the Prefectorate certain legislative powers, although its most important function only came after the death of Duncan Liao, when the Prefectorate gained the right to designate one of its members as Chancellor. This right was diminished, however, when the Chancellorship became a lifetime appointment, and severely curtailed when the Star League agreed to grant only members of House Liao a seat on the High Council effectively limiting the prefecture's choices. Additional restrictions came in 2598, when Chancellor Quinn issued the decree of succession, stating that, in the event of failure to elect a new chancellor after three formal votes, the chancellorship would automatically be ceded to the most senior member of House Liao. Only if a member of House Liao was unavailable or not of age, could the Prefectorate choose another in their place. Despite its diminished purpose, the Prefectorate still maintains significant powers. It is responsible for passing national tax legislation, appropriations for the military, and officer appointments for those military units outside the Chancellor's direct control. The Prefectorate arbitrates disputes between commonalities, and, at the Chancellor's discretion, may issue decrees or rule on court decisions. 
It also has the power to pass so-called acts of ennoblement, granting certain privileges and responsibilities to certain individuals within the Confederation, a power it has used as a way of counteracting decrees passed on by the Chancellor. Finally, all legislation passed by the Prefectorate is inviolable, except by the House of Scions, and the body cannot be removed or disbanded by the Chancellor. The House of Scions This is a governing body composed of Capellan nobility, originally formed as a check on the power of the Chancellor and the Prefectorate. Membership is open to both types of nobility, although the 12-year terms are staggered to ensure constant turnover. The power of the House of Scions has ebbed and flowed through the centuries, from superficial rubber stamp to serious political force. In the beginning, the House had the power to veto legislation passed by both the Chancellor or the Prefectorate, but the right to review the Chancellor's decrees was removed by Michael Liao. During the Star League era, the House gained the right to appoint new members of the Prefectorate, and after negotiations with Ilsa Liao, it gained the right to determine taxes for individual commonalities, separate from the national taxes determined by the Prefecture. Like the Prefecture, any legislation passed by the House of Scions is also inviolable. The Ministerial the Ministerial is the bureaucracy responsible for enacting the legislature passed on by the Troika, created by Chancellor Baxter Liao as a mea culpa for the incompetence of his own administration. Every ministry is headed by a director, who reports quarterly to the Prefectorate, with a first and second deputy director under them and various department coordinators, assistants and administration staff. Originally, the ministerial was divided between the commonalities in an attempt to prevent an unacceptable concentration of bureaucratic power. However, in 3059, Chancellor Sun Tzu Liao ended the system and relocated all the ministry headquarters to the Forbidden City on Xi'an. Citizenship Unlike the other successor states where individuals are born with citizenship, in the Confederation citizenship is a benefit to be earned. All the minors in the Capellan Confederation are technically wards of the state, under the provisional supervision of their parents or guardians. During this time they receive a state-sponsored education and are encouraged to participate in the betterment of their community. By age 15, each Capellan child is evaluated to determine if they have proven their commitment to the state by participating in their community, whether through outreach work or civic participation. Those who are found to have provided service to the state are granted citizenship. Those who have not are given additional education and a grace period of two years, after which they will have a second evaluation. Failure to earn citizenship after this second evaluation relegates an individual to the class of non-citizens referred to as servitors. Wink, wink. Immigrants to the Confederation must also earn their citizenship, although this may occur in a number of different ways. The simplest one is for foreign nobles to pay a relocation fee and immediately be inducted into the ranks of the Sheng nobility, albeit at a lower level than their previous rank. Other immigrants must undergo a full educational cycle on the meaning of Capellan citizenship and perform a service to the state, typically several months of unpaid labor within their chosen profession before being accepted. For the populations of recently liberated worlds, all individuals are immediately made servitors and required to spend no less than five years in this condition, until given the opportunity to earn their citizenship. Capellan citizen rights are defined by the Capellan Concordat, and their privileges are multiple. Membership in the caste system, free healthcare and education, retirement pensions, and more. 
While for the most part they are left to their own devices, citizens also have a number of obligations. They must take an oath of loyalty to the Confederation, to House Liao and the Chancellor. When so ordered, they may be relocated to another world or retrained to serve in another industry. All at the state's expense, of course. If not a member of the armed forces or home guard, they must register with their local militia and serve during invasions or natural disasters. Above and beyond any legal obligations, citizens are expected to continue providing services to the community throughout their entire lifetime and the state makes a point of continuing to promote and reward those who provide selfless service to the state. In contrast, the punishment for some of the more serious crimes, treason, cowardice, and more, results in a loss of citizenship and automatic demotion to servitor status. The military of the Capellan Confederation is known as, well, obviously, the Capellan Confederation Armed Forces, or CCAF. Historically, the CCAF has been a competent and professional military, equal to its enemies, but often hamstrung, both by meddling chancellors and trying to do too much with too little. The chancellor serves as the commander-in-chief of the CCAF, and has a seat on the Strategios, or Capellan Command Council, which in theory runs the day-to-day -day operations of the military. Though unfortunately in practice, this all depends on the whims of the Chancellor. In a testament to House Liao's distrust of the military, the rank of general has been abolished by Jasmine Liao, leaving their function in the hands of senior colonels, and this would not be reinstated until six centuries later by Sun Tzu Liao. The CCAF is composed of both frontline and reserve units, as well as the home guard and planetary militia units. Mercenary forces also play a major role in defending the Confederation, with McFarren's armored cavalry winning itself equal standing with the likes of other famous mercenary units. Outside the military chain of command, and answerable only to the Chancellor, are the elite warrior houses and the death commandos. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the Capellan Confederation and House Liao for today. Hopefully, I will also be able to make a video about their economy, society and culture sometime in the future. Are the Capellans, or House Liao, among your favorite Battletech factions? Why do you favor them? Let me know and discuss in the comments below. Was this video informative or entertaining? In that case, please click the like button and subscribe for future content. I have been GDN, and I thank you very much for watching to the end, and I wish you all a peaceful and productive day.